gentlemen, please remove your hats for the invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this December morn, I come to you not with flowery words or phrases, but with sincere supplication. First, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you that we are able to gather and celebrate on this special occasion. We thank you for these graduates and dignitaries assembled here and for those who have gathered with us virtually. May your presence, Lord, be actual and not merely virtual. We neither need nor want a mere virtual presence, but we need you to survive. We love you. We need you to survive. Help us all to become unsinkable during this unthinkable time, to unite knowledge and faith, thinking critically and believing passionately. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. I ask you all to be seated for a moment, please. And in order to properly recognize the veterans in our presence, I ask all the veterans to stand at this time, please. Are there any veterans among us? Let's show them our appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. You are America's heroes. I ask all the rest of you now to stand as 2006 alumnus Letitia Scott sings the Star Spangled Banner. Good morning, class of 2020. This year has caused many of us to assume that we're sinking. Unexpected disaster has strongly impacted our corporate worldviews. And as I've reflected on two decades worth of baccalaureate messages that I've shared, I realized that none of those brief orations was adequate for this day, this time, and this setting. 
I've spoken on John 316, of course, Aretha 316, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, <laughs> Petey Pablo 316, Raise Up, and even considered Rick James 316, which I actually used last Sunday morning as a counterpoint to the purity of the Virgin Mary. Unlike the Virgin Mary, she's a special kind of girl. <laughs> the kind you don't take home to mother. As a multilingual scholar fluent in Appalachian English, I once spoke on taters. Spectators, commentators, dictators, couch taters, sweet taters, and arse taters, which I did not realize were the same vegetable as Irish potatoes until I was a grown man. It has been suggested by some that I preach about hell today simply because it would warm us up under the tent. But I think that's unwise. But as a recycled foothill Billy holding his preacher, I must confess that having a microphone under a tent tempts me to go into full-blown tent revival mode. Therefore, let me warn you, if at any point during the message you hear me say, Billy Ray, Sidney Earl, you unfetch fetched them boxes of rattlesnakes. I suggest you run quickly. A year ago, we would all have assumed that on this day we would be warm and dry in the Rocky Mount Event Center with 3,000 of our friends and family members celebrating this joyous occasion. Then 2020 happened. Every paradigm we had ever perceived became passe. The unthinkable has happened. How do we remain unsinkable during the unthinkable? On Thanksgiving Day, I ate an appropriately distanced meal with a few family members, including my brother-in-law, Tony. Tony was beaming, showing me pictures of the 1966 Dodge Dart convertible he was lovingly restoring for his 15-year-old daughter as her first car. Tony is tall and slender, yet muscular, a 55-year-old man who's consistently worked out three days a week for years. Yet Monday, he collapsed at work. He's comatose. He has not spoken a word since. The doctors at Duke said he would be a quadriplegic. The unthinkable had happened. He is currently in the ICU at Duke University Hospital. But Tony has faith, and so does his wife, Beverly, and his children. Unshakable, unsinkable faith. On Tuesday, Tony wiggled a finger. On Wednesday, he moved a leg. Thursday, he tried to pull the breathing tube from his mouth. He is literally battling for his life, progressing daily, as is his wife. Their faith is keeping their family sane. When the unthinkable happens, how do you respond? I suggest we learn from our namesakes, John and Charles Wesley, who often spoke and wrote on the importance of uniting faith and scholarship at all points of life, predating Reverend Al Green 316, which states, whether times are good or bad, or I'm happy or sad. The Wesleys both graduated from Oxford University in England, perhaps the finest university in the world at that time. And they strongly believe that faith and reason which they referred to as knowledge and vital piety in their stilted 18th century language, worked together. Our Methodist cousins down the road at Duke University adopted the Wesley slogan as their motto, Latinized as eruditio et religio. I believe it's not just a motto. It's a tool for facing life's unthinkable moments, whether they be international crises such as a pandemic or personal crises, such as life-threatening illnesses. Speaking in the chapel at Duke in 1992, I half-jokingly addressed that motto, stating that Eruditio referred to extensive, and I might add expensive, knowledge gained primarily through books. I also noted that et was the Appalachian English past tense of the verb to eat, and religio was something that I had found at the altar 10 years prior. I suggested to them that perhaps the pursuit of knowledge had devoured the practice of faith at the university. My devilish audience was only slightly amused 
even less so when this Tar Heel born and bred informed them that he had learned how to properly spell and pronounce the word Duke at age six. Yet all of us in academia face the same temptation to allow our scholarship to devour our practice of faith, assuming that scholarship is somehow superior to faith. Indeed, some say that the two are mutually exclusive, that faith must be discarded in order to engage in true scholarship. But that is disingenuous. Faith and science are not at war with one another. Rather, they are complementary. A leader in the current pandemic struggle is a perfect example of this. Dr. Francis Collins is Dr. Anthony Fauci's boss. While Fauci has become the face of the pandemic on television, Collins is his supervisor, the director of the National Institute of Health. He is a world-class scientist who earned multiple doctorates and has graduated from UNC, UVA, Yale, and taught at Michigan. He was the head of the Human Genome Project in the 1990s, which unlocked the mysteries of human DNA. At that time, President Clinton referred to Dr. Collins as the man who speaks, quote, the language of God, unquote. In a book by that name, Dr. Collins goes on to say that his research did not threaten his faith, but rather it enhanced it. I encourage you to employ both knowledge and vital piety. When striving to be unsinkable during the unthinkable, think critically, but believe passionately. At Wesleyan, as at any liberal arts college, you are taught to think critically. You have been trained to analyze complex situations, weigh out options against one another, strategize, set goals for the future, and other aspects of critical thinking. From my own college days years ago, I remember Jeremy Bentham's principle of utility, the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people, as well as studying the pros and cons of any policy by writing them out and discussing them in a public policy analysis class. I try to use the skills that I have been taught. And in times of common good or times of crisis, I suggest you do the same. Study a situation, make sense of it, analyze it, explore your options, then take action. Graduates, I encourage you to use your critical thinking skills in everyday life. But by all means, don't assume that critical thinking means divorcing your faith. It does not. Those who say that one must discard their brains at the door of a church, mosque, temple, or synagogue are wrong. Informed faith supersedes informed ignorance. When facing the unthinkable, people of faith fare better than those without it. Dr. Michael Berry of the Cancer Treatment Centers of America has written several books full of empirical research that bear this out. Similar research at Duke Hospital suggests that patients who profess faith and pray heal more quickly than those who do not. Look it up. Think critically, but believe passionately. Remember that all major religions espouse either the golden rule or the sil silver rule. Treat others, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and don't do unto others as you would have them not do unto you. This influences how you treat your God, how you treat other people, and how you treat yourself. It also shapes your worldview. So whatever belief will you believe, there is a consistent theme in religion. Life may be difficult now, but it will get better. You need that positivity in your worldview now more than ever. The great African-American preacher, Reverend Dr. E.V. Hill, summarized it best when addressing Christ, burial, and resurrection. His quote, well known in Christian circles is, it's Friday night, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday night, but Sunday's coming. 2020 has been a nightmare, but Sunday's coming. When comedian Richard Pryor hypothetically poses the question, how long will this bovine scat go on? Dr. Hill's response answers, it's Friday night but Sunday's coming. When facing the unthinkable during this time of pandemic, you need both eruditio and religio, knowledge and vital piety. Think critically, bishops, but also believe passionately. 
you can remain unsinkable during this unthinkable season. Battling bishops, think critically, but believe passionately. I will close with a poem from a gentleman who sprang up from this same sandy soil of the Eastern North Carolina coastal plain, adapted, who once wrote, North Carolina Wesleyan, raise up, take your hat off, hold it in your hand, spin it like a helicopter. North Carolina Wesleyan, raise up. This one's for you. This one's for who? Us, 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 us. Class of 2020, raise up by thinking critically and believing passionately. Be unsinkable during the time of the unthinkable. In the name of Almighty God, amen. Good morning. I would like to start with thanking Chair Equipment Reynolds and Equipment Reynolds, who saved the day by providing us with this exceptional tent and this equipment on the 12th hour of our preparation. I also want to thank my executive assistant, Cindy Edwards, the graduation committee, and all of the faculty and staff who put in the long hours to make this day possible. It is my great pleasure to welcome everyone to this celebration, which honors a group of promising men and women who through intelligence, discipline, and hard work have earned college degrees from North Carolina Wesleyan College. This is indeed a joyous occasion, a time when we celebrate learning and academic achievement. It is also a time when we recall once again that few worthwhile things are achieved without the help and the support of others. So whether it be parents, children, siblings, give a round of applause to those who helped you get here today. Today, we will honor our graduates through a ceremony, elements of which stretch back through the centuries of medieval Europe. The academic robes, the caps, and the gowns to note that each of you have joined a long and proud tradition. It is important to note that on this occasion, that these degrees are provided by an institution which, which seeks not only to dispense knowledge, but to develop habits of lifelong learning. And we expect our graduates to be responsible citizens, contributors to the common good, women and men who care about others. As we celebrate together, we acknowledge the obligations all of us have to help bring that forward to make for a better world. We persevered through one of the most challenging years of our lives, and we did it by supporting each other. I am fortunate to work with the best faculty and staff who care about our students and the communities we serve. As we close out 2020, can I get an amen? Let us all reflect on Wesleyan's, on some of Wesleyan's core values, which include empathy, understanding, respect, and kindness. Let us make a commitment that in 2021, we will do better, we will care more, and we will use our talents for good. With all that said, it is my honor, pleasure, and privilege to introduce our December 2020 commencement speaker. Award-winning actress Sharon Lawrence was born in Charlotte, but moved to Raleigh, North Carolina in her junior year and graduated from Broughton High School. She attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she graduated in 1983 with a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and was very active on stage with the UNC Chapel Hill Playmakers Repertory Company. 
Her father was a news reporter for our very own WRAL news station in Raleigh. And he and his wife are watching today, so I would like to say hello. Uh, Sharon was a proud founding and leading actor at the North Carolina Theater, which is still going strong after 36 years at Raleigh's Memorial Auditorium. You may know her from her multiple Emmy-nominated and SAG award-winning portrayal of ADA Sylvia Costas Sipowicz in the groundbreaking NYPD Blue. Or as Izzy's tender but ditzy mom on Grey's Anatomy, for which she earned her fourth Emmy nod. Or on her recent work with John Larroquette on the CBS comedy Me, Myself, and I. Sharon currently recurs on several different television series. She is the mother from hell on the reboot of Dynasty, my wife's favorite. Okay, it's mine too. <clears throat> A sociopath on Criminal Minds and can most recently be seen opposite Kirsten Dunst on Showtime's On Becoming a God in Central Florida, the Apple Plus series Home Before Dark, and Hallmark's The Christmas House, which originally aired November 22nd, 2020. An accomplished Broadway stage actress and 2012 uh, Lunt Fontan uh, Ten Chimneys Fellow, Sharon recently starred in A Kid Like Jake at the Pasadena Playhouse. Sharon previously chaired the Women in Film Foundation, where she incubated and managed corporate partnerships with Netflix and the Shoal Foundation. She is still active supporting women in industry on the advisory board there and at weforshe.org. Sharon currently serves on the board of directors of two effective environmental organizations and is a trustee of the Screen Actors Guild Foundation. Please give a warm Wesleyan welcome to Miss Sharon Lawrence. Good morning, battling bishops. It is such a pleasure to be here with you and to congratulate you on this beautiful sunny day that I think your pastor must have arranged for you. I have a feeling he's got Paul. <laughs> this particular commencement is it's quite an accomplishment, isn't it? In light of everything that we have all been managing. And I offer my sincere respect to everyone who surmounted the obstacles that were obvious and the ones that are perhaps unseen. Just to arrive at this anticipated day. And I want to send my respect to your support system, whether they could share this moment with you or not because they did make this help, make this goal attainable and even sweeter. And to your RAs and your TAs, the cafeteria staff, the maintenance crew, the security guards, and the COVID compliance teams, which all learned these new protocols to protect you. And also to your esteemed board of trustees and chaplains, and deans, and to your president, Dr. Duff, who's now my new friend, and to the city of Rocky Mount for making sure that this prayed for milestone has happened. So thank you all for the honor of celebrating such a success with you because it uplifts me and my husband who flew across the country with me during a pandemic because your graduation is powerful proof of resilience. When I was invited last winter to address your class for the spring, the touch points, they felt clear for me because we have a common appreciation for this state, maybe even our roots. We share here in North Carolina, a place that has so much to offer and that offered me a quality education, which is another common value that we share. Now, my ancestors, they settled in the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Smoky Mountains, and they led modest and even hard scrabble lives. 
but education was emphasized. And my great-grandfather, a subsistence farmer in Marion, North Carolina, insisted that even during the Great Depression, his four children would get a college degree. And indeed, all of my grandparents either worked their way or paid for their siblings to get that higher learning. And most of them went into the field of education, including my mother, whose focus was on early childhood development and in certifying teachers for Head Start at Shaw University. And I tell you this because those of us who have had that commitment modeled for us are indeed blessed. And you who have fulfilled this commitment during such difficult circumstances, well, you will be an exceptional example for those who come after you. And as a product of public schools, the final one just a few miles west of here in a little town called Chapel Hill, I know that college has offered you more than the training in your chosen field and that the range here is so impressive from business and the humanities. And I just want to shout out right here the entertainment arts majors. Where are you? Any of them here in the audience? Any of them attending? Well, I hope that the tons of content that we have all consumed during these protective measures validate you that it is a noble calling. And you science and uh, math graduates, I do believe that you will solve most, at least many, of our global challenges. And those of you in the social sciences, like the criminal justice system, you are tackling other life-threatening issues, which we are all now more awake to. Now, Wesleyan was founded during one of the most expansive and progressive periods of our American history. And it has offered you more than the courses you took. It's offered you advice about life, about how to explore your impulses and how to make sound decisions about them, how to create community and how to nurture your own personal spiritual development. These tools, they will guide you in everything that you do. That's what my college experience did for me. And in the three decades since I followed my father's footsteps, hi, mom and dad, and graduated with a degree in journalism, the surprises that life has presented were and are managed with the intellectual and psychological wiring that was gained there surprises like becoming a professional actress because I mean I already had the hard wiring from performing from my father's gene pool we have the gift of gab and my extracurricular time always involved singing and dancing in school plays and I knew that it gave me joy but my people are essentially pragmatic like most mountain people and during the summer breaks from Carolina Although I earned money for school as a singing waitress and by performing in summer theaters, I never imagined this as a career. But it was one of those summer theater experiences that I first met professionals in theater. And their unbiased assessment of my abilities gave me the encouragement and the courage to take a risk and to give myself a time frame of five years in New York to pursue my passion. I want you to note it was unbiased opinions that I sought and looked to for an assessment of whether or not this was a field that I could enter with confidence. So I took that leap. But it didn't stop there, because after a nearly a decade of traveling the world doing musicals and getting an education about other cultures and people and what it was like to work as a team member and to show up every day, eight times a week for a show that was for an audience that had never seen it before, I took a leap to Los Angeles. Because by that time, I wanted to explore what it was like to be a dramatic actress. 
I had no connections there. I had no prospects. And uh, it was uh, extremely unlikely that at 30 years old, starting over would be easy. So I was hanging my dreams and my belief on the idea that I had something worthy to offer, which was gained by the experience and the wisdom that was earned during my early career. Those of you who are learning later in life, I want you to know I feel you and I salute you. And I want to give you this word of encouragement that during my first year in Los Angeles, I was volunteering as a seat filler for the Emmys. The next year, I was an Emmy nominee. As the great philosopher Herman Hesse wrote, in all beginnings dwells a magic force guiding us and helping us to live. It was my intention today to answer questions about my profession that people are often curious about. Like, how do we learn so many lines? Well, it usually involves repetition and matching movement with the words to cue the order of the story and the emotional journey that the character will take or how we discover how we learn material, whether we are a visual, an auditory, or a kinetic learner. Do we get nervous? And if so, how do we manage those nerves? Well, nerves can be mistaken for excitement and anticipation. And once the work begins, that energy becomes focused into action. So when you notice something comes naturally, you know that you're suited for it. Now that's not to say that I don't get nervous. Believe me, fractions make me break out in a cold sweat. How do we deal with not being hired for a role? By accepting that in professional storytelling, like in other professional circumstances, many choices that that team makes are subjective. So like the creative arts, every team has different tastes. But what I do know is that my job is to serve those who have chosen me with discipline and positivity. I'm perhaps proudest of the work that I have done over 20 years through several philanthropic groups that Dr. Duff mentioned that bring more inclusive perspectives to media like women in film. But I know that ultimately who I work for and serve is the audience. And I am also grateful for the teachers and the crews and the fellow actors and the unions who protect safe and fair working conditions and secure health care for the professionals in my field. Like Einstein said, a hundred times a day, every day, I remind myself that my inner and outer life are based on the labors of us to give in that same measure as I have received and am still receiving. Mine is a people business, and it has taught me so much about the subtle and not so subtle effects that our energy has on any situation and what we produce with it. So how in creating a character, I study the nonverbal nuances of behavior that reveal truth, and I use it every day in my work and in my life. See, Einstein also said, Curiosity has its own reason for existence. What you're hearing is that I learned from my family that education and determination are important. I learned from being a student to broaden my scope of knowledge beyond my given studies. Professionally, I have learned how to accept disappointment and persevere. I've learned how empowering it is to give back. And I hope that you too honor and cherish input from your friends and family, that you keep learning every day and you have big goals and dreams and serve others. In 1956, your founders served others by imagining a more inclusive future. 
a future where everyone belonged. To paraphrase my friend, the filmmaker Ava DuVernay, everyone knows what it's like not to belong to something. No matter the privilege that you enjoy in society, even on a personal level, everyone has not belonged in some way, shape, or form. But you belong to this place. And we all belong to this moment. You are among those who will lead us into the future. And you are very well aware of the challenges that we face. Today, you decide what comes after. Like the great writer Toni Morrison said, the choice that you make, may make, will change or simply elude your being. But your own story means that you can always change the tone of it. And it also means that you can invent the language to say who you are and what you mean. My favorite modern philosopher, Rebecca Slotnick, a historian also, she urges us all to leave the door open to the unknown, the door into the dark. That's where the most important things come from. That is where you yourself came from and where you will go. There is so much more ahead for all of us. And I look forward to seeing where you, the distinguished class of 2020 will go and how North Carolina Wesleyan continues to grow. Thank you and congratulations. So I thought it was tough going after Dr. Drum. Now I've got to go after Sharon Lawrence there. <laughs> but, but you will be interested in what I have to say because we are about to do our conferral of degrees. We move now to the conferral of degrees and I want to offer a brief word of appreciation to our faculty and staff who brought each graduate to this place on this day. Would the candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration please stand? This is our inaugural group, our first, first cohort of our Masters in Business Administration. So welcome here today. On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Would the candidates for the degree Master of Science please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Would the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. 
Please be seated. Would the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Marshals, please take your places. Robert Carl Benson II. Jayla Capri Davis. Denaid Michelle Dickens. Tracy Michelle Dowdy. Tori Desmond Harrison, Sr. William Ladena Lynch. Tiffany Lee Lyons. Brian David Milburn. Atina Donette Lucas Newsom. Demond Wayne Odom. Aurelis Perez. Shanquilla Devana Perry. Alicia Jenna Ruffin. Katasha Lavette Simmons.
Brigitte Catus Small. Atia Angelique Spells. Alexander Logan Blackwood. Andrea Nicole Hines. Stephen M. Lassiter. Kenyetta Ann Lofton. Dante Maurice Denning. Marianne Pena Guerrero. Hatisha Patrice Rich. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole Stallings. <laughs> Jamel Lester Winstead. Jacqueline Smith Battle. <laughs> Michaela Raymane Lois Bonner. Aresia Aisha Carnia Cherry. <laughs> Caitlin Joe Sink. Alyssa Nicole Clark, graduate of the Honors Program. Amber Ray Crandall. Jessica Angela Cruz. Azure Vernell Edwards. <laughs> Hana Funadeku. <laughs> Mario Garza. Daniel Aaron Grisham. (laughs) 
Leonardo Guzman the fourth Alyssa Ann Hardin Courtney Lee Hill Bijaya Lamishani Vondra Denise McLean Destiny Deschanel Murray Catherine L. Newsom. Mary Elizabeth Reynolds, graduate of the Honors Program. Dawn Alexandria Romero. Belinda Josephine Sears. Terry Yvette Stallings. Monticia L. Starks. Joshua Wayne Strasser, graduate of the Honors Program. Matthew I. Swales. Antion Narje Thorn. Charlene Williams. Jessica Marie Winslow, graduate of the Honors Program. Shimon Rahim Wright. Aaron Lamar Alston. (laughs) 
Tony Shanika Austin. Dion Laglicia Anthony. Gary Steve Ariaga. Patricia Stewart Battle. Samantha Janae Battle. Frank Daniel Carver Beecham. Kevin Michael Berry, graduate of the Honors Program. Mark Anthony Bethay. Maximo Miguel Bompart Morales. Haley M. Bonds. Brandy Whitfield Boyette. Andrew Allen Brown. Nania Isabella Marie Brown. Tyler Ray Brown. Ebony Nicole Bryant. Stephanie Janetta Brodus. Ayana Danielle Bryant Blunt. Marquita Renee Bullock. Victoria A. Burkhart. Manuela Cano Vandermeer.
Kristen Breedlove Cottle. Emma Chambliss. Alexis Kavana Chestnut. Dennis Blake Comer. Jody Corbett. Tanika Siobhan Council. Lakita Laquan Davis. Chloe Delmas. Cynthia Renee Edwards. Carlos Deshaun Emerson. Sean Alexander Alexander Demetrius Evans. Boris L. Evans Thomas. Brian Faust. Maribel Garza. Serena Ann Gibbs. Jesus Rafael Gil Lopez. Sergio Andres Gil Herrera. Jackson Paul Graham. Natalie Renee Grant. Harlan Nathan Hall. Cynthia Harris.
Bernadette Latrice Harrison. Latonia Therese Henderson. Anna Brown Hernandez. Nasar Ali Hill. Kimberly Shanae Hines. Julie Ann Hershey. Brandy Leah Hunter. Natisha Shantae Hyman. Alicia Faye Jacobs. Lakeisha Denise James. Boluatife Johnson. Leslie Jones Keeler. Garrett Bryce Coulterman. Jared Cordell Lassiter. Gordon Mitchell Layton. Ha Nyan Lee. Larry Lynch. Patrick Wilhelm McDaniel. John Kia. 
evangelier means. Jewel T. Melvin. Luke Randall Mills. Katura Monet Moore. Sarah Elizabeth Moore. Natasha Muller. Camelia T. Nicholson. Kara Moore Norris. Shireen Denise Oates. Elias Patino, Jr. <laughs> Michelle Laverne Patterson. Sharonda Monique Payton. Bradley Wayne Pennington. Hunter Sebastian Farr, graduate of the Honors Program. <laughs> Ashley Jefferson Phillips. <laughs> Alexandria Brooke Rhodes. Elizabeth Rivenbark. Savannah Lee Rivera Jacobs. Raquel Michonne Rogers. David Rosales Castillo.
Latori Rouse. Rabin Sangrula. Deborah Leona Sassums. Noah Roger Schrock. Kimberly Silver. Brianna Nicole Spain. Kieth Dickens Taylor. Sherlanda Lashal Taylor. Alec Michael Titmus. Thomas Edward Turner. Gary Jerome Warren. Danielle Denise Vick. Kristen Janelle Dawson. Harriet Denise Whitehead. Sakethia Laquan Wilkins. Jessica Danielle Evers. Crystal Baker Winslow. Leah Victoria Wright. Congratulations. Honorary degrees are conferred on individuals whose lives are characterized 
by remarkable achievements and sustained commitments to the values stated in North Carolina Wesleyan College's mission, namely preparing students for professional advancement, lifelong learning, and responsible participation in their communities. There is a common thread of service to others among honorary degree recipients. Miss Sharon Lawrence certainly qualifies. Therefore, upon the recommendation of the Honorary Degree Committee and the approval of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to bestow upon Miss Sharon Lawrence the degree of Dr. of Arts, Honoris Casa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Miss Sharon Lawrence, will you come to accept your Doctor of Fine Arts Honorary Degree from North Carolina Wesleyan College? Good morning and welcome. Sharon Lawrence, President Duff, faculty, trustee board members, and most importantly, graduates, and a smaller number of guests than usual. But here we are. My name's Elena Katuzas, and I'm a 2010 graduate of North Carolina Wesleyan College, as well as the current director of alumni and donor relations. Today, I have the distinct honor of welcoming you to your alumni association. Like me, many of you came to Wesleyan as the first in your family to attend college. Some of you attended while working, and for many of you, that means you were working full time. Some of you had families, and others had family obligations. Some of you came from different countries just to study here. All of you had challenges and obstacles to overcome just to make it to this very moment. I can assure you that the knowledge, skills, relationships, friendships, and experiences you gained during your time at North Carolina Wesleyan have prepared you to launch, relaunch, and further your career. People say that we don't know what the jobs of the future look like and that a college education isn't the sure bet that it used to be. But I say for you, that's not a problem because you have a liberal arts degree from North Carolina Wesleyan College. You have learned the most important skills needed by the workforce of today and tomorrow, namely problem solving, how to discern and synthesize information, how to form arguments and analyze different perspectives. You've learned how to learn, think critically how to communicate effectively, how to work in teams, and how to engage in constructive debate while respecting the opinions of others. With these skills, you can adapt and transform your career to meet any market demands that emerge. Today, you each receive a 2020 alumni commemorative coin. Each graduating class receives their own commemorative coin with the college seal on one side and a picture of the campus landmark on another. This picture, along with the date, changes annually. The 2020 coin bears the picture of the flagpole in front of the Braswell building. With receipt of this coin and depletion of completion of your degree, you join a community of over 15,000 Wesleyan alumni. As you embark on your journey through life, remember that you will continue to be part of the North Carolina Wesleyan College community, and this community needs your engagement. Please let our alumni office know how to reach you, where you are, and what you're doing so we can celebrate your accomplishments with you and you in turn can celebrate Wesleyan's accomplishments with us. Completing your degree is a remarkable accomplishment and we, the North Carolina Wesleyan family, are so very proud of you. So now for the moment you've all been patiently waiting for, 
On behalf of the Wesleyan Alumni Association, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome each of you as members of the North Carolina Wesleyan Alumni Association. Please join me as we transfer our tassels from right to left. Welcome to your Alumni Association. Now, if everyone will stand as Miss Letitia Scott, 2006 alumna, sings the alma mater. Almost at the end, so you can actually remain standing. Thank you, Miss Scott. Again, I follow in awesomeness. Thank you. Congratulations and best wishes again to all of our graduates. You make us all proud. We wish each of you the very best in the coming years, and I urge you to keep in touch with your alma mater. You are part of the Wesleyan family for life. Let me close by saying we wish you a very Merry Christmas and an exceptional holiday season. Please stay Wesleyan wise. I don't have to say this, please all stand. You're standing, that's awesome. Um, Reverend Dr. Barry Drum will offer the benediction and after the platform party has left the stage, ushers will release each row. Please stay in your seat until your row is released. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh God, with your help and by your grace, and only with your help and by your grace, we can say today, Vini, Vidi, Vici, we came, we saw, we conquered, we graduated, we celebrated. Thank you for this opportunity to do that. And I ask that you would empower us by your spirit that we would have wisdom and courage as we walk into the future. In your blessed name, we pray, amen. <laughs> 